So I think taking a, let's take this from the top. So my first question to you would probably be, what exactly are place cells? Are they a type of neuron? And if so, what sort of sort of specific role do they play? Which is different from generic neuron. Um, yeah, I don't know that there's such a thing as a generic neuron, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, I mean, these are generic neurons in the sense that they they have the same structure as all neurons. With a you know, a, they're a cell um, with processes that reach out and connect to other other cells. Um, these ones are quite large, so so they're relatively easy to record from um, because when O'Keefe started out, the technique for recording from animals that were awake and walking around and doing stuff, um, it was just quite a new technique. And so uh, you know, he happened to be recording from a brain area where it's very easy to pick up those signals and to be able to record from a single neuron. And I mean, these are tiny little things. So it, one of these neurons, the, the cell itself is about the thickness of a hair, you know, so they're quite small. Um, but this technique meant that um, you could record for hours, some, sometimes for days. So, so it's very stable recording. So what makes these ones special is um, that they they only become active when the animal walks into a particular place in the environment. So typically we'll be recording as it's walking around in a box in the laboratory, just exploring, trying to gather bits of rice that someone's thrown on the floor <laughs> to encourage it to move around. So, so the animal is, isn't really having to do, do much kind of thinking, as it were, or navigating. But these, these cells are tracking where the animal is. And if you just record one of them, you'll find that every time the animal goes into a particular place, let's say it's just one corner of the box, one particular corner, every time it goes over to that corner, that cell suddenly becomes really active. So it starts firing lots and lots of um, nerve impulses um, or action potentials, as we call them. And, and then the, the animal walks away and that cell stops. So the question is, how, how does the cell you know, quote unquote, know when the rat has gone to that corner and how does it know when it's gone away again? Like what's the information? Because this cell is just in the brain, it's getting inputs from other cells. <laughs> so what's in those inputs that says you're in a corner right now? Um, it's a really intriguing question. Yeah, it's funny to think that I'm extrapolating this to humans to think that if you go into your house, you have a certain set of neurons which would activate in a certain pattern versus if you go to your office or go to what particular room in your house versus somewhere else in your house um do you see the same neuron activate for different regions i'm assuming it's a pattern of activation or is it just like one neuron per place kind of thing no no your your assumption is right it's a pattern so each neuron um is active in many different places and if you record from a, you know, an environment that's sufficiently large that it'll be active in several places within that environment. So, um, so each cell has capacity to <clears throat> represent, if you like, mul multiple different locations. So, um, so for whatever part of the brain is reading the output of these neurons, <laughs> if you know, to, if you think of the other other bits of the brain that are using this information for something else, um, they need to be able to read lots of these neurons at once because if you were just following one of them you there'd be an ambiguity about where you were you wouldn't know if you were in your living room or in the bathroom because this particular neuron is active in both of those rooms but if you look at the pattern of neurons you know you're looking at thousands and thousands of them there's only one place where this particular you know 500 neurons um, are active all at the same time and so you've got a very kind of specific code for a specific location but, you know, the same physical location can have more than one code. So, for example, if you change the, um, the situation that, that the animal is in, so, so to take a real-world example, imagine um, you go into um, a large space that sometimes is a sports hall, but in the evening you can fill it up with chairs and make it a concert theatre or something like that. Like, lots of schools have that. So you could imagine that the hippocampus has... Um, a different map for those two things. Like when you go in and it's a sports hall, then there's one pattern of play cells active. When you go in in the evening and it's set up to be a concert um, theatre, then you've got different cells active. So although it's kind of the same place, and part of you knows it's the same place, but another part of you is going, it's a different 
it's a different situation, it's a different setting. So these play cells really, I, I've taken to thinking of them in my mind now as more like situation cells. So it's place plus the significance of the place at that particular moment. Yeah, so the second example you sort of gave was a place which is sort of is familiar to you but is arranged in a different way. How do these cells activate in a place which is completely unfamiliar to the perceiver? So uh, d does it work as if it just sort of imag reimagines it as a familiar place and then takes things from there? Or does it, is it start from a place of having no idea what's going on and then uh, learning of learning? So if the new environment that the animal goes into is sufficiently different that you know that you can reasonably ima imagine that the rat's going oh this is a different place <laughs> um then you'll see um a, what looks like a completely different map of the place cells so we call we call it a map loosely um the sort of the pattern pattern of activity of the cells in in that new space it, it just looks like a new map if the if the new space is reasonably similar to the other one. Sometimes you see similarities where there might be um, a cell that's, that's active in, in the same corner or something like that. But that's pretty rare. Um, and I think that that only happens if there's a real ambiguity such that the rat actually is a bit confused, rat or mouse or, or human or whatever, actually is a bit confused about whether it's a new space. So if it's definitely looks like a new space, you just get a completely new map. It just seems to be um, generated um, de novo. It takes a few minutes to really consolidate, so that so the um, the activity of the neurons is a little bit imprecise for the first few minutes, but then it settles down quite quickly, and then it's quite stable. So um, if the animal goes away and then comes back at a later date, uh, it'll recreate that new map. So it looks like the new map gets established pretty quickly and then um, locked in, as it were. So there's still some um, there's still some debate about whether the the new map is what they call pre-configured, like if the whether the cells become active in a new place that's already predetermined by the connections that exist, or whether it, it's kind of random. So you know the cells become a little bit randomly active, and if one happens to become randomly active in this new room, then you get um, synaptic plasticity. Actually, so. It's where I started my career <laughs> with the synaptic plasticity phenomenon, um, connections strengthen to that cell so that it kind of becomes, you know, if you like, attached to that location. And then subsequently, every time the rat goes back there, it'll come active again. So I think probably my view is that, yeah, it's a, it's a bit random to begin with. It, it's not strongly pre-configured, but it's a bit pre-configured. You know, the cell is slightly more likely than um, by chance to fire in a particular location because of its connections. Once it starts firing, those connections get stronger, and then it will certainly fire there in the future. So it's a very plastic system. It's learning all the time. Because it's learning all the time, is it also forgetting all the time as well? So if I was to be put in a city which I hadn't been to in 10 years or 15 years, or if you decided to come back to Otago or Wellington, or something, would your neurons first fire randomly and then sort of settle down into the previous pattern or would it form a new pattern to what it was, what the pattern was the last time? You were yeah, here? That's, that's a good question. And I, I don't think we fully know the answer yet. Um, no, because we haven't done the really long term experiments like, like that. But one, th one thing that has emerged, which is um, not fully consolidated yet is that there's a bit of a turnover in the in the maps over long periods of time so if you record over a long period of time um, you do find that even in the same location there'll be a, a different map but mixed in with that with that new pattern it seems like there are some cells who have the same pattern so they've held on to the same pattern for a, a really long time um, but you know we we don't have a lot of data on this, but I think um, I think it's beginning to look now like the, um, the there are different rates of turnover for different cells. So some cells will lose the pattern quite quickly, and some will lose it very very slowly. And it's been suggested that what that 
does is it enables you to um, to store in, in your map some information about how long ago it was since you were there last. So if you go back and the cells have the same pattern that they had the last time you were there, then the brain can infer that it must have been quite recently. Whereas if the pattern has changed quite a lot and only a few cells still have the same map, then it must have been a long time ago. So some people have suggested that this is a kind of a time stamp, if you like, this this turnover of activity is a time time stamp of sorts. So I, I quite like that idea. I don't know if it's true. I think we have still quite a lot of work to understand why the pattern changes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's an interesting question about forgetting and and the degree to which it's you know a, a feature or a bug of the system. <laughs> yeah.